Naruto and Sasuke fought at the end of Shippuden, and Naruto won. Well, technically they tied in their physical fight, but Sasuke admitted defeat to Naruto's convictions. Naruto and Sasuke at that point were by far the strongest ninjas alive, and their fighting styles could not be more different. And by that I mean Naruto has only three jutsus or so in his arsenal, his wiki may say he has dozens of them, but they are literally all Rasengan variants. Oh come on, you know I'm right. Sasuke in contrast actually knows dozens of jutsus, which grants him a lot of variety, especially after he awakens the Rinnegan. This the difference in variety makes both of them fight in very different ways. Naruto is much more of a let's make a thousand clones and bum rush the guy with a Rasengan type of fighter, while Sasuke has more things he can do and therefore he can create more strategies. Sasuke also displayed great battle IQ in his fights during Shippuden. Against Deidara, Ditachi, Danzo, Sasuke showed a lot of intelligence and that he knew how ninjutsu worked during a fight and how to counter the enemy's abilities. The problem is, Sasuke loses 80 IQ points just prior to his battle against Naruto. He fought like an imbecile, and if he used an ounce of the intelligence he showed in the previous fights he had in Shippuden, he would have destroyed Naruto in the Valley of the End. Subscribe to this channel so we can buy Sasuke some new IQ points. Part 1, Sasuke's awful jutsu selection. So the fight starts, and right out of the gate, Sasuke positions himself in the most advantageous advantageous position you could ever ask for. He manages to blitz Naruto from behind, catching him off guard. We also know Sasuke is fighting with killing intent, so finishing the fight right then and there would be perfect for him. Now, Sasuke has a hundred different options to go about it. Number one, use the human path and extract Naruto's soul as soon as they touch. Number two, use Onyx Chidori, which is imbued with the power of the Sage of Six Paths and also was able to hurt Jubidara pretty bad. Number three, cast a Chibaku Tensei centered on Naruto, and then when Naruto is trying to leave the gravitational grasp, shoot him with a thousand Amaterasu arrows. Number four, lace his Chidori with Amaterasu, heading Naruto and making him burn until he dies. Number five, use the Preta Path Rinnegan abilities to drain Naruto's Kyubi cloak, weakening him and then following up with a killing blow. And the list goes on up until number 146, but you get the point. But instead of doing anything useful once he finds himself in a perfect position to strike a killing blow against Naruto, Sasuke hits Naruto with a base Chidori, an attack Sasuke knows Naruto already survived a direct hit because he did it in the past and this Naruto is bound to be stronger than Kid Naruto and have more durability anyway. Now the anime grossly misrepresented the scene because in the manga Sasuke uses the fireball making Naruto block it with his QB chakra and then Sasuke blitzes Naruto from behind with sheer speed. In the anime for whatever reason they decided to make Sasuke use Ameno Tejikara. And do you know how I know that? Because because in the manga, Naruto had three good Odamas in the start of the fight. Sasuke appears behind him and Naruto still has three good Odamas, so Sasuke didn't use anything to change places with Ameno Tejikara. In the anime, they give Naruto four good Odamas and you can see Sasuke swapping places with one of the good Odamas to teleport behind Naruto. The anime fight implies Sasuke wouldn't be able to blitz Naruto without his teleportation, which is false because he clearly does so in the manga. Another stupid change the anime makes is that Sasuke strikes Naruto with his right hand, while in the manga Sasuke strikes Naruto with his dominant hand, his left hand, and that is the hand with the moon mark from the Sage of Six Paths, meaning Sasuke could have used something much stronger than a Chidori against Naruto there. You could say Naruto could counter those jutsus I mentioned before, or that Sasuke didn't know how to use his Rinnegan abilities to their fullest, like the Human Path and the Preta Path, but he definitely knew the Preta path at least a bit because he used it later and he was pretty good with Ichibaku Tensei because he put every single tail beast under Ichibaku Tensei. Also, why wouldn't he just use an Onyx Chidori instead of a regular Chidori? What would he lose by using a more powerful Chidori variant? And even if Naruto countered the initial attack, such as Ichibaku Tensei hypothetically, 
Sasuke could have a massive advantage and he could still use his Amino Tejikara to follow up because in the manga he didn't use that to blitz Naruto, meaning it wasn't on cooldown. Or even use a Chidori mixed with the Madarasu because he did later in the fight, but it would have been much more useful if Sasuke had actually hit Naruto with it, something he clearly did after the blitz, but it was just a regular Chidori. Oh, which takes me to part two. Sasuke never uses a Madarasu when he should have and then uses it when it's gonna be useless. We saw Naruto countering a Madarasu with a QB cloak towards the end of the fight. So you may say a Madarasu would not work on that Naruto, but I disagree. The version 1 cloak was able to save Naruto from the Amaterasu because it creates a layer of chakra between the Amaterasu and Naruto's skin. But when Naruto is in 6 path sage mode QB chakra mode, he doesn't have that added layer of protection. Naruto's skin turns bright yellow, so if he gets hit by Amaterasu, it's over because it actually hits his skin. Sure, he could tank the flames for a while and survive a decent amount of time, but the fire wouldn't extinguish until Naruto literally burns away and dies. Now, you may say Naruto still has several counters for Amaterasu with his 6 path sage mode QB chakra, and you would be right, he could dodge Amaterasu or use an extension of the QB avatar to block Amaterasu like the version 1 cloak, but the thing is, Sasuke's Amaterasu can be molded into a Chidori, which definitely hit Naruto square on without any of those protections in the beginning of the fight, meaning Sasuke could have killed him right then and there. The only way this wouldn't work would be if Amaterasu outright doesn't work on that version of Naruto, which would imply that ninjutsu in general wouldn't work against him. But that's not true, because Naruto is clearly trying his best to block Sasuke's attacks, and if Sasuke couldn't harm him, he wouldn't even bother to put his defenses up anyway. Also, when they are fighting with the perfect Tusado and the QB avatar, we clearly see them touching each other several times, blocking and parrying attacks. The QB blocks the Susano sword with its tails, so just lace your Susano sword with the Matarasu and start burning the QB avatar. Eventually, it will start burning completely and Naruto will have to discard it, meaning you can actually hit Naruto's body. Part 3. Sasuke, you have a Renegon. <laughs> Use it. I think by this point, it's very clear, but just to make sure, I am talking about the fight in the manga, which is the actual canon version. They put a lot of extra stuff in the anime that never happened in the manga to make the fight longer, but in the manga, Sasuke never uses his Amino Tejikara during the fight against Naruto. He also doesn't use any of the Rinnegan abilities except for Chibaku Tensei and the Preda Path. So why wouldn't he use his OP teleportation ability? Amino Tejikara can be used in so so many broken ways. Bear in mind, it can teleport other people too, just like they did with Jubidara, which enabled Naruto and Sasuke to land the Rasengan Chidori combo on him. Why wouldn't Sasuke just teleport Naruto directly in front of him, or his Susanoo's or whatever, and then hit Naruto? There's no saving throw for Amino Tejikara, it just happens. Jubidara was pretty confused when he got teleported by it, meaning there is no warning, it just happens. No matter how great your reaction time is, this combo would give Sasuke a perfect advantage to attack Naruto and catch him off guard. That jutsu could have been used in other useful ways as well. Say, when Naruto tosses a massive Rasen Shuriken against you and then you can, you know, instead of getting hit by it, you swap places with Naruto, making him hit himself with his own attack. The effective range of Amino Tejikara and its cooldown time are not specified. The data book says it's a short to medium range jutsu and there is a determined amount of time you have to wait until you can use it again. So maybe Naruto would be too far away when he tossed the Rasen shurikens, but Sasuke had a decent range in Amino Tejikara because he was teleporting things that were pretty far away when he teleported Madara and also when he used Amino Tejikara in the fight against Kaguya to actually go inside seal her, he was pretty far away of Kaguya as well. So yeah, Sasuke should have used that jutsu. Part 4. Why would you risk everything on an all or nothing attack when you're winning the fight? So Sasuke drains the chakra of the Bijus into his Susanoo, and his power spikes quite significantly. Naruto uses his shadow clone with a QB avatar to try and counter that and compensate for the power difference, but Sasuke's Indra Susanoo is destroying the clones and Naruto himself pretty 
easily. Sasuke has a clear advantage now. Naruto's QB avatar cannot compete against Sasuke's ultimate Susanoo, so naturally now Sasuke will bomb rush and beat Naruto's QB avatar in a quote-unquote taijutsu fight, seeing that Naruto doesn't stand a chance. No, nope. he will use all the tail beast chakra in one jutsu, shooting Naruto at a distance. And by the way, this jutsu takes some time to charge, which allows Naruto to collect sage energy and charge his Rasen Shuriken to counter it. And by doing so, Sasuke depletes all of his chakra. Just keep attacking the QB avatar with your sword. It was working just fine and Naruto was clearly outmatched. Why would you spend all your chakra in a jutsu that may not work? In a jutsu, Naruto may be able to dodge. You clearly had the advantage and if you were running low on Tail Beast chakra, you could just get more and they were right there. As long as you still had some chakra to keep the Susano up, you would never lose this fight. But no, let's spend all the chakra on this very jutsu here. The, the arrow looks very cool, man. Let's shoot Naruto with it. People say Naruto was holding back, not attacking Sasuke with full power during the fight. But I mean, he tossed a Bijudama, used his QB avatar, and then those massive Rasen shurikens as well. He was definitely fighting to win and not just defending himself as some people like to claim. On the other hand, Sasuke was holding back, not physically, but mentally. He was doing everything Naruto would want him to do. He was fighting using his most powerful jutsus, attacking very straightforward in the most predictable way possible. He never thought about any elaborate strategies to catch Naruto off guard. He was just attacking recklessly, essentially. So yeah, if Kishimoto had unnerved Sasuke's intelligence to Choji's level, he should have destroyed Naruto in that fight. Subscribe to this channel and like the video to help Sasuke regain his IQ points. It seems like he hasn't found them yet in Boruto. Oh well, he's gonna die within the next 10 chapters anyway. Thanks for watching!